What's up, fellas? We're back here doing some work on the high emissivity, high temperature paint that I found in a PDF from the Los Alamos National Nuclear Laboratory back in the 1970s. So the reason we, why we want a high emissivity paint, again, just to recap, is as you can see here, this metal coupon is the same temperature, but a certain portion of it of it is shining brighter than the rest because it's been painted with the high emissivity coating. And what this will do inside of a high temperature furnace is emit even more infrared radiation back at the workpiece rather than letting it escape out the furnace walls. So we have painted this entire furnace with some of this high temperature wash and we did a test and we melted some route iron and some steel. We came in at a temperature of about 2900 Fahrenheit or something like that, extremely hot, and we melted the whole furnace down to where we had a puddle of molten material about an inch and a half deep at the bottom of the furnace. We melted the walls and everything. The metal melted a hole in the bottom of the crucible, so things went a little bit too well, you could say. I have completely melted the throat of my furnace out. I can't believe how deep that puddle of material is. Here is the stainless steel coupon that we set in there. It's got some stuff stuck on it that just won't come off. Wondering if that's some kind of reaction with the paint we put on it before we put it in there. So we did a number on that thing. It definitely melted. Didn't completely liquefy it, but I, it got buried early on in flux, so it was shielded from the heat. Some of this was route iron, this piece right here, which has a melting point of 2,900 degrees. And students, I mean, this looks like a war zone. This is not what I would call a peaceful assembly of people. Uh, and we, we, When it's underneath flux, it'll melt, but if, when it's exposed, it, it kind of burns away as well, too. We're going to do kind of a, another debriefing today on the high temperature, high emissivity coating. You can see a lot of it is still present on the furnace walls, but a majority of it melted down. You can see where it kind of flowed down into the furnace floor there. So the furnace wasn't up to the task. So the bottom's completely full of everything that was in the crucible, molten metal and borax. So this furnace has pretty much seen its days. We're, we're gonna call it a day on this thing. And I'm gonna chisel this out, but we're gonna see what's at the bottom of this thing and see how much steel or route iron, some of that in that crucible may be route iron, which has a melting point of 2,900 degrees, which is consistent with the thermal readings that we got with the IR gun. So. I think we're going to chop the front of this thing off of here again, and um, we're going to give this a shot. We're going to put some new refractory in this thing, and we're going to run the test over again. We're going to run the furnace with no refractory, and then we're going to run it with refractory. I've got some 3,200 degree alumina. We're going to be going with Ease Cube 60 LQY, an alkali resistant 60% alumina castable, which has an operating temperature of 3,100 Fahrenheit. It was the only reason it didn't run out of the furnace like I've seen it do before is because we had so much airflow that it was holding it at bay. But yeah, this thing is uh, pretty much full. It's time, it's time to chip it out and put some good refractory in here. This was some 2,400 degree refractory it was backed with some fire brick. All right, fellas, so I got these two pieces curing in the background. We melted the furnace, so we had to stop testing and reline it with a more expensive liner. So we're a couple of hundred dollars in the hole here, but, um, I think it's going to be worth it. All right, so I chipped the edge, so I'm going to stop here. I don't want to do any more damage. I'm chipping it all up down in there. 
So we're just going to burn this piece of metal out of here. It won't take nothing to burn this thing out of here. So I think that's probably what we're going to try. We are going to do a standard slow preheat here. We're going to bring the temperature up slowly to about 210 degrees or so, 220. And we're just going to let it rest. All right. So our exterior temperature has reached 232 degrees. I think we're pretty much done here. I don't know if I'll be able to touch this. You're seeing some red hot action in there. Oh yeah. We're hot. Time to shut it down though. All right, fellas. The winds are bad. burn out this piece of metal and this metal formwork that I couldn't get removed without damaging too much of the refractory. All right, fellas, so here's what I've learned about the paint on metal. The paint will stay on the metal as the device is heating up and as it gets red hot, but when it cools off, it, it crimples up and crushes and cracks off the metal in some spots. The material will stretch with the expanding metal when it's hot, but during contraction, it cools off too quickly and becomes hard, but the metal still contracts and it falls off the metal. So. It's not good past 2,500 degrees. So there's the elephant's foot we got. I gotta try to bust that out of there now. A couple of little thin pieces left. So for the most part, the idea worked out. Probably could have ran it for a little longer, but it's too loud for a Sunday.